Hey everybody, welcome back to Two Comic Book Dudes. Um, I'm Aaron, editor in chief of Comic Booked. Hey everybody, Justin, managing editor over at Comic Booked. And this is TCBD Dead Talk, um, Into the Badlands review for season one, episode two. Um, TCB Dead Talk is just kind of the general, the shows like uh, Walking Dead and Into the Badlands. And uh, hopefully someday, if we ever get caught up, Ash yeah. versus Evil Dead. Um, yep. <laughs> I watched the first episode. You've watched the first episode? No. Not yet. Okay. So, so we're behind. still there. What are and they think, on now? Like episode three? I think three just Four? came out. Yeah. Yeah. Three. Yeah. So we got a couple to catch up, but we'll do that. But anyway, back to this show Into the Badlands. Awesome new show on AMC right after Walking Dead. Yes. Um, really, really, really good. This is probably my new favorite show, um, especially with Walking Dead going on a uh, break here after next Sunday. You know, mm-hmm. it'd be nice to have something to watch every. Uh, I- I'm hoping it stays on Sunday evening. So we'll see. But uh, is this is a post-apocalyptic kind of world? Um, there's doesn't seem to be electricity. Well, maybe there is. It seems like they've got gas lights and that kind of stuff. But you think they have like electricity? I haven't really seen. We that know that they use oil for something. So yeah, and they have cars. Right. So it's not so. like a whole worldwide EMP kind of thing. Right. Um, but yeah, it's, it's and it's so they're older cars. No, no Could new kind EMP. of cars. Could be. Could be. Yeah. So we don't really know what caused the big, the big problem. Um, there are. You know, there's in this episode. There's a big factory, a turbine factory, that uh, you know looks more modern. So it's it's interesting. There's looks like there's some modern type things and some old typey things. But everybody rides horses. So some people do drive, um, but only right. have access. Well, so that's the thing with this is we don't know how long ago the apocalypse or whatever happened to turn this world into what it is happened. Right. You know, so. How many generations? We, we all we know is there was at least one Baron before our current Baron. Quinn, about it, you know. Yeah. So we have we've learned about two of the Barons so far: Quinn and the Widow, yep. um, or what was her real name? Um, Minerva. Yeah. Uh, which she says, "I'm not Minerva anymore. I'm the Widow." You know. Um, this uh, th- so she's our spotlight character tonight, really, because. Uh, last episode, it was Sonny. You know, he's the main, sort of the main story character. But yep. the Widow is awesome. I mean, she just really, she can fight. Like, I'd like to see her and Sonny pitted against each other. Uh, that'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I expect that to happen someday. At some point, yeah. Yeah. But uh, this episode starts off with her going to meet uh, Teague, who is one of her former regents. And uh, she's coming to ask him about... Uh, some things that have been happening, you know, people stealing from her and whatever, trying to find out what's going on. So, um, while she's there, these guys show up and decide that they're going to attack her. Um, guys that we find out have been uh, hired by Ryder, who's mm-hmm. Quinn's son. Right. Um, and Quinn is the Baron of, so each Baron controls a resource so far from what we've seen. Quinn, his world's more like a plantation kind of world. Everybody rides horses. Um, they, they have farms, you know, the poppies that they grow. And mm-hmm. that's kind of how that world is designed. He's like, he's the Baron. He's Lord of the castle. He's, you know, they, they have the, called the fort. Um, but really reminds me of a plantation owner kind of guy yeah. with oh, his yeah. slaves, definitely. you know, definitely. Yeah. So um, the widow is more, not agricultural, more technology, more like uh, m- machinery, kind of mechanical, uh, because she controls petroleum. She controls mm-hmm. the oil. Yep. And so, you know, we definitely have a different world that she's in. And you can kind of see that in the bar. If this bar is in her type of the world or part of the world, it's more, you know, I, I just got more of a mechanical feel from the bar than I got from all the stuff that we've seen about the Baron. So, about yeah. Quinn. So, yeah. Sure. Uh, but yeah, this this fight scene. I mean, eight guys come at her, and she takes on eight guys. It's just amazing. Um, pulling, you know, I mean, really, she just starts using the environment against them. But oh, then yeah. the knives that she's pulling out, throwing knives at guys, and um, you know, she throws two knives, sticks them in this guy's chest, and then she jumps, grabs them, and flips up over him, <laughs> takes the knives out, and throws them at somebody else. 
just really, really cool. I mean, the one thing that I love about this show is how beautifully choreographed the, the fight scenes are. Yes. That's just amazing. You know, we watch Walking Dead. It's like, oh, shoot, 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 shoot. Walker's coming out. Run away. You know, but in this, there's people with swords, people with knives, people with sticks and clubs and whatever. And they're all dancing around each other. And it's just really beautiful. Very, very cool. Yep. So, uh, Teague dies, you know, and basically she kills all the guys except for the last one. She finds out that he's hired by Ryder. She says, your cooperation is much appreciated than sticks her heel through his throat. Yep. Still let him through the throat. <laughs> yep. So that was cool because it, it definitely shows she's not a she's not afraid to kill. Right. Um, and we see more of that in this she's episode. Very capable of it. She's yes. Her kung fu is very strong. That's right. Yep. So we we like that. Um, you know we we know. Um, so th- and then that first part's kind of over, but she definitely has. She knows she wants to take out. Ryder and possibly Quinn if Quinn sanctioned this yeah. uh, in the first place. So um, MK is the boy who everybody's after. Uh, she actually paid the nomads to find him in the first episode and Sonny freed him, took him back to um, back to the fort and Quinn was just going to make him one of the Colts, but Sonny kind of helped him escape. So he's on the run. Uh, he's running. He comes to the border, the widow's border and meets Tilda. And Tilda is this girl who's really good at fighting and holds a little butterfly uh, throwing star up to her, his neck. And uh, then she helps him get away from the, the rider. So Sonny and the, his guys are chasing him. They won't go past the border of the widow. So right. there's definitely clear delineations of each person's territory. And, uh, and everybody has, you know, everybody has their own place. So um, it's interesting to see the politics play, you know, you got some Game of Thrones-ish kind of stuff going on. You got some, um, <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. just a little bit of everything in this show. It's it's pretty cool. Yep. Um, so Quinn basically knows that somebody helped MK escape. He knows that. Um, he doesn't know who. I think he kind of has a feeling that it's Quinn, that it's uh, Sunny, but yeah. I don't. I don't think he really knows for sure. Um, he he knows what's going on, sort of, but he doesn't know everything that's going on in his little kingdom. So um, we we find out in this that there's actually some other issues that Quinn's dealing with that we kind of suspected in the first episode that he was sick. You know, he'd been uh, taking like, smoking opium and that kind of stuff, but got headaches. Yeah. Yep. So um, uh, uh, he definitely suspects Ryder had something to do with the attack on the widow. So I think he sees there's something going on there, and he's afraid of what could happen because Ryder is his son, but Ryder's definitely not the favored child, you know, um, of Quinn's only one child. So it's kind of sad. But. Yeah, there must be some backstory or something. There's got to be, and there's some things we find out about Quinn or about Ryder through this episode. One right. thing where they take his, uh, the the girl takes the thing off his foot. Yep. And we see that his foot's kind of mangled. Yeah. Now, whether or not he got injured in something in some way, or if he was born with that, it it looked like there was a lot of scarring and stuff. So I'm going to yeah. say that it was some type of injury. Yep. So something happened that he was injured, made him not fit for battle, not fit for combat, and so his father looks down on him for that. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's just some things to speculate there. I don't know. There's something that happened that really made. Quinn fall out of, or I'm sorry, Ryder fall out of favor with Quinn. And we, we don't know exactly what that is yet. Um, now Ryder tries to get back at that by basically he, he's at the dollhouse, which is the whorehouse. And uh, this girl is cutting him off a piece of opium out of this big block. And he's like, how could you afford a whole block of my father's opium? And she's like, I've got it from these guys. So she points him in the direction of these nomads at uh, the, um, turbine factory Mm -hmm. all a big setup from the widow because the widow's daughter was the one who told her to say that right so that that was kind of interesting um so um then you try to kill me well i'm gonna try to kill you right (laughs) so yeah so we know you know it's obviously going to be an ambush it's all a setup um but quinn at this point he kind of grabs uh 
Quinn and uh, or, I'm sorry, Quinn grabs Sonny and says, let's go for a ride. And he goes with them to the doctor. And this whole part is kind of sad, I thought. Mm-hmm. But we find out that the doctor and Vale, Vale's the girl who um, Sonny has been, is his girlfriend basically, but he's not allowed to have a family, but she's pregnant. Yeah. So the code is very explicit that he cannot have a family. So he wants her to get rid of the baby at first. Um, but Quinn takes him out to the doctor and the doctor and his wife end up be, having been Vale's parents in a way. They took her when she was a child or when she was a baby. Um, they, it was a gift from Quinn for him saving his life or something mm-hmm. or saving his wife's life during the pregnancy for uh, of, of Ryder. So, and that's another thing. Did she have Ryder and then she wasn't able to have any more children? Right. And so maybe that's why Quinn, because Quinn kind of resents her and he's going to marry that, uh, the other girl, Jade. So is he marrying that other girl, Jade, because this, his other wife couldn't have more than the one child and Ryder, he, he wants an heir, you know, but I don't know. she kind of alluded to him having like several wives. So, or he could, she said he could have as many wives as he wants. Uh, but I think I don't think he has had any other wives except for her, and now Jade, soon yeah, to be Jade. Uh, Jade, who's actually sleeping with his son, right? Writer. Well, and <laughs> what, he finds, what he finds out at the doctor's then that throws that whole plan out the window anyway. Really? Yes, for sure. Um, yeah, the fact that he's got a tumor or some kind of growth, um, and of course, with that technology, low technology world that we live in that they live in, there's no uh, chance of operation that could, could save his life. So, right. Um, I thought it was weird that the doctor told him like, you know, he asked the doctor how long he had. And the doctor said that he would see the winter solstice. Maybe. maybe. And I thought that was weird that he would call that. Like he would say that as like a, as a time frame reference instead of just saying, uh, winter, you know? Yeah. Or a couple months. Right. I mean, do they maybe not track time like we, like we do. Yeah, because, I mean, uh, and, you know, and that may be it because there's so much in to like the harvest and things like that, and working yeah. field. Maybe they've gone back to that, you know, kind of the we're we're waiting on the solstice and things of that sort. I don't know. I just thought, yeah, I just thought that was kind of strange. But I mean, it cool. is interesting. It's kind of awesome. yeah. Well, and it, it illustrates, I think, the world they live in and how right. how times have changed. Times have moved back. You know, right. Um, I'm reminded of um, the, the the Gunslinger, the the Dark Tower series. And how, you know, a lot of times they say the world's moved on, you know, mm-hmm. things have moved on and they have, I mean, in this world, they've moved away from the technology that we rely so heavily on. I mean, there's no way we could do this show if we lived in that, in the Badlands, we'd have to go out and find Afra because they probably have internet. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, you know, bad news for Quinn. Um, which he takes even worse, <laughs> takes very badly as he steps out and says, Sonny, go back in there and clip those two. <laughs> I was like, what? Go kill uh, the people that raised your girlfriend. Yeah, and Sonny's like, but I can't. He's like, what if I told you they had a weapon that could destroy me? <laughs> then right. he takes takes Sonny's sword and he says, I'll do it myself. He goes back in there and hacks him up. I mean, this is terrible. And then he comes back out. As far as I'm concerned, you did this. Yep. I was like, oh, wow. Um, mm. And I think that's the point. You know, I think there's been a lot of things that Sonny's questioned with Quinn Mm -hmm. and Sonny's never been one to just sit back and take things. I think he's always kind of pushed, but in this case, you know, this was kind of like the last straw because then he goes back to Vale and he says, we got to get out of here. Yep. You know, you're my family. We have to go. Um, and, and you, you know, I'm, I'm doing this. So he says you and the baby. So right. Right. On board with the baby. now. Yep. And definitely some hard choices for him, I think, because this world of honor and duty that he feels, you know, he, he lives in, um, he's, mm-hmm. he's stepping out of that. Yep. So, um, all right, <clears throat> let's see the widow. So, okay. So we have this whole thing now. Tilda has taken MK back to the widow's house. Um, the widow turns out to be Tilda's mom. Yay. Yay. Um, so MK is now in the house of the woman who paid to have him found by the nomads in the first place. He's a little bit scared. Um, so Tilda, you know, introduces him. Um, basically she says, the widow says, well, I'm looking for a boy your age. 
And do you know anything about this symbol? He's like, no. <laughs> and well, then, then the whole bathtub thing, you know. Yeah. So he's like, freaky. I'm supposed to stay here and watch you. Um, as he climbs the bathtub, she's gone, and the widow's there, and it's like, whoa. Um, but yeah, she starts like, you know, <laughs> washing him, and the kid's like, help. <laughs> yeah. So it's gonna kill me. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, and then of course she orchestrates a, a, an opportunity for Tilda to cut him and um, expose his power. Uh, right, right. So she fakes him out, cuts her own hand, puts it on his face, and then makes him like like she cut him. But before that, he gets done with his bath and he comes out in just in time to see her Tilda facing off against one of the nomads. Mm-hmm. And I mean, she's like. She's like Ronda Rousey in the last fight, not this, not this one, but the one before that. You know, <laughs> boom, 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 you're done. Jump right. up on, snap your neck, that's it. Um, so yeah, it was something. That fight was pretty cool. Um, yep. So we know where she gets it from. Um, and then kind of the the finale of this. Um, well, no, so she basically um, gives him away to the nomads. Yes, because there's no yeah, point keeping him. Money. He's not the one. She sends him off with the nomads. It's like. Great. He just got away from the nomads last, last episode. So I hope this is not a pattern. You know, he's going to be back and forth between the nomads and her. And, um, but so we get cut to the turbine factory. They throw MK in the car and they take off to the turbine factory because they got to set up their little ambush. Um, Ryder and Sonny show up, go in, find the crates that are, of course, empty. Um, mm-hmm. And then a whole horde of nomads are there ready to kick their butts. Um, yes. And of course, Rider, first thing, chain around the neck, yank him up, hoist him up. Yeah, um, so he's, so he's being said, hung the entire time. This fight that's about to happen goes on. Yep, dangle, dangle, and uh, then uh, then Sonny go, just rips into the group. I mean, he he yeah. seriously like lays into him. Um, the fight is good again. Beautiful choreography, just amazing. Up and down the stairs, onto the girders, and across the steel and. Uh, everything about this fight is is awesome. Um, he kills so many people. And, yeah, they, and, he uh, either kills uh, or severely cripples everyone because yeah. he goes after legs a lot too. Yes, all that one scene, he's just like, yeah, he's he just like around and... in a circle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that was uh, in the first fight. It's just going back to the first fight, I remember one scene where uh, the widow has the knives and she's just going at this guy, and you can just see mm-hmm. the sprays of blood from where every cut that she makes, which I thought that's yeah. really cool the way they've done that. Yeah. Uh, it's the same thing with this fight. You know, there's fights times when he's slicing around and you see the blood spray from the cuts and it's pretty cool, yeah, you know, kind of, kind of gory, kind of gross, but it's, it's cool. And it really, if you like walking dead, this is nothing near as gory as walking dead. I mean, yeah. This sure. is way tamer. You're not seeing like people get disemboweled. You're just seeing yeah. like blood spray basically, yeah. but it's very well done. Yeah. Um, you know, definitely reminds me of, uh, you know, some like classic Tarantino without all the language. Yeah, true. Uh, and yeah, without I could the, see him doing something similar to this. Yeah, without the cop hating stuff, too. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, um, definitely a great fight. You know, it ends up, uh, Sonny tries to get Ryder and he almost gets stabbed in the back, except for MK. MK shows up to save the day, kills the guy, um, and then they get up there and get Ryder down. Uh, and that was uh, kind of wraps up that. But he, um, as he gets back, of course, he has to bring MK with him. Mm-hmm. And uh, now uh, the Baron's ready to strangle this kid because he escaped, not because he's anything to the Baron. Right. And Sonny agrees to take him on as his cult. So the cult are the, the trainee the cutters. Yeah. Right, right. Um, Quinn, Quinn's kind of bothered by this because he's like, you've never taken a cult before. What's so special about this kid, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's interesting because the widow had talked about training the boy to be a weapon yep. and leader of her army. Right. And Quinn's more like, you know, this boy just needs, or I'm sorry, Sonny is more like, this boy just needs to be trained so that he knows how to control himself in a battle. Not so that he can be a leader, not so that he can be a weapon, but so that he's not a force for destruction uncontrollable. Right. So I, I thought that was interesting. I like that. But his, do- his other reason is he's got to train the kid because he wants the kid to get his girlfriend out of there. Right. Of so. Yep. 
out of the Badlands. See, this should have been called Out of the Badlands. Yeah. But we're kind of going in. It's. It, I get the feeling that we're moving from the the outside more into what the Badlands are in a way. Like mm-hmm. Quinn's world is sort of the center. And then as you move out, then it's the the widow's territory. Then it's somebody else's and it's somebody else's. So we're going to see, I think they said there were, there were eight barons mm-hmm. in all. Right. So we've really only been introduced to two. And then we know the nomads are out there traveling from place to place. They don't have any one place they call home. They're just kind of mercs for hire. Um, so it's, it's a, it's a really good show. I mean, definitely a lot of, a lot of storylines playing together and, uh, uh, it's, it's well-written. It's the action is cool. Um, I, nothing about this. I don't like yet. Yeah. It's way better than I you know originally thought it was going to be. So two episodes in, I'm pretty happy with it. Well, definitely leave us some comments. Let us know what you think about this show. Who's your favorite character so far? Uh, don't say writer. You know, there's, there's some great stuff in here. <clears throat> Really, really uh, uh, like the show. So, so um, wait, here, here, here's the question for you. Mm-hmm. Do you think, all right, so we're only two episodes in. Do you think Sonny makes it out of the Badlands? Or do you think Sonny <sighs> becomes a Baron? See, I don't know. Because I don't think Sonny wants to st- I mean, at the beginning of the episode, of, of the last episode, or not the episode one, he was standing on top of the wall and he was looking out. Right at, at what's beyond, and I think whatever happened that he got that compass, mm-hmm. that's that's a strong influence on who he is now. Whatever it was that happened, when that kid was dead, he took that compass from that kid, whoever that kid was, and however that kid died is going to play into who Sonny is. Right. So I think we're going to see some. It was his brother. I, I think it was his brother. We don't know exactly, do we? No, we don't. We don't. I'm just guessing. Yeah, I, I think it's a brother or something. And then what we know is I, I think he's going to find out more about his childhood, more about who he was and how he came to, to be part of Quinn's family and a, and a clipper. And yeah. he's going to want to go to Afra. He's going to want to find what's outside of the Badlands. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And maybe he's going to be instrumental in destroying the – infrastructure that exists in the badlands or at least exposing corruption and helping to create a better world i don't know you know it'll be like the matrix kind of a thing so we'll see only six episodes in this first season so we can't do whole a whole lot um oh wow we're almost halfway done wow yeah i know it's hard to believe but yeah this first uh this first season will just have six episodes like they usually do with the launch season to kind of mm-hmm. see how it is. I mean, I, I've heard rave reviews and we've, we've rave reviewed it already. Yeah. Um, yeah. it's definitely grabbing on and, and people really like it. So, um, it's cool. All right. Like, share, subscribe, please leave your comments. Let us know who you, who you think is, uh, is the coolest character so far. Um, what do you think about Sonny? Do you think that he's going to become a Baron? Do you think he's going to destabilize the infrastructure? Do you think he's going to die and uh, maybe not see his child be born? Never know. Stranger things have happened. Yeah. So. I want a replica Sonny sword. We need to find those. Oh, for sure. Those, they got some cool stuff. Even her, uh, her hip knives yeah. were pretty awesome. Those are cool. Yeah, were. Cool. So, all, right. all right, everybody. Well, we'll see you next week. Have a have a good week, and hopefully, you tune in, tune in for some of other shows. Check out our other content on our YouTube channel, Comic Booked, uh, on our Facebook page, Comic Booked, ComicBook.com, or on our other Facebook page, Two Comic Book Dudes. We're all over the place. That's right. All right. Thanks for watching. <laughs> have a good one.